Greetings everyone and welcome back to Age of Empires 4 with me Kemzet. We're gonna continue on with the Rise of Moscow campaign with mission 4 in the year 1382, Horde against the Horde. Retribution was coming to Dimitri, Moscow's stone walls would face their most audacious test yet, the full force of a Khan enraged. On the morning of September 8, 1380, at Kulikovo, the Moscow-led Rus' army defeated the Mongols for the first time. One of the key battles of the medieval age, it was a transformative event in the rise of Moscow as the future capital of Russia. For the first time, rival principalities had joined Moscow to fight a common enemy. Now, many Rus' principalities began to see themselves as one. Future leaders of Moscow would draw on the memory of this battle to claim their supreme political position in Russia. Moscow's Grand Prince, Dmitry Ivanovich, had led the Rus' principalities to victory over the Mongols, reinforcing his dominance. But for the Mongols' leadership, the defeat at the Battle of Kulikovo was disastrous. The ruler of their Golden Horde was overthrown by a descendant of Genghis Khan. His name was Toktamish. And Toktamish was not going to let the treacherous Moscow-led Rus get away with rebellion. Two years after their defeat at Kulikovo, Toktamish's Golden Horde set out to attack Moscow. The city had not felt the wrath of the Mongols for more than a century. That was about to change. Exactly, Dmitry Donskoy had angered the Golden Horde. Thirsty for revenge, Toktamish Khan descended on the capital. Moscow would pay for its defiance. Racing to brace the gates of Moscow, Prince Dmitri and his army of Rus allies rushed into the fortified heart of the city. This would be the greatest test of Moscow's mighty stone walls. But could the capital hold out against the furious legion of the Golden Horde? We shall see. Uh, where's the villager? The Muscovites had already faced many Mongol attacks on their city and knew the horde would arrive in vast numbers. The race to fortify Moscow began. Could garrison one here, but should I though? I know. How about we start making some units? Um, 
how do I create the monks? Because they are quite overpowering, dude. Holy shit. Um, well, let's just make some heavy knights then. And some more spears. Some more archers. Wonderful. Okay, we have some people getting in there. I wonder where they will be coming from. Should I start upgrading these buildings here? Yeah, we should. Give them some nice stuff here. Okay, let's also create some more knights and all that. Oh, wait. Nope. Here. Let's gather our armies this way. Hold on. I'm gonna keep my knights here as a defense force in case the enemy starts attacking me. Um, I would love to have some extra food actually because we have already enough wood coming in. Let's also produce some more food. We could also advance to the next stage. That's even better. Why do we not have a hunting cabin here? Come on, make one. I mean, let's just get out these people so that they can work and produce us some more food. Because food is vital at the moment. I could just send some horse, I mean horse, archers there, there. Um, could also upgrade these and send some more archers in that thing. Tower. As Dimitri urgently prepared the city's defenses, fleeing villagers from nearby towns flooded into Moscow, desperately seeking refuge from the rapidly approaching Mongol army. Mm. More farmers, please! Well, everyone is just running inside, but I am not earning them as villages or something. Too bad. I mean, I could slowly start upgrading these buildings too quick. Could be very useful. Should I upgrade these things? Yeah, we should. Um, let's start selling a bit more stone too, and a bit more wood, so we can upgrade these buildings. Oh wait, we need to receive more resources to do this. Let's just make more villages then. And increase our the refugees eco. from the settlements surrounding Moscow had all arrived at the city. They would wait out the Mongol assault behind Moscow's stone walls. Wait, do we ha Yeah, we do. Okay, right. Um, how about we then start run and hunting here as well? Come on. Could be good. Oh, hold on. We can also hunt here. Let's go, let's go, let's go. We need food. Quick. We need more food, please. The attack is coming soon, lads. Come on. have some cavalry ready. Nice, crush them. Oh no, come on. Really? You know what? Never mind. Get out. Just die then, weaklings. Hearing the thunderous beat of the Mongol war drums on the horizon, Dmitri rallied his men to hold their ground. If the stone walls were breached, the city would fall. Where are they coming from? Just 
die. They're coming. Meet the enemy. Charge. They're running away so man. Yeah, they're gonna try to harass my economy. Oh shit, run. Run, 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 run. Okay, here comes more reinforcements of the enemy. Charge! Oh, they're going after my villages here. Run! Run! In and then, no choice. Charge them down. Here they come again. Perfect. We have held. Okay, now I can advance to the next age. How about we start doing that then? Uh, Actors of Monos, you can provide. Oh, yes, these are the things that we want. Warrior monks, please. Come here, baby. Here they come. Again an army. Crush them. Nice. Perfect. Still have some nice cavalry as well. Wonderful. A lot of horse archers ready just in case they try to come in. These are just the vanguard as well by the way, but... If we can continuously kill them, we'll be fine. Oh shit. Send them. Uh, I need some more reinforcements this way. More spin, please. Oh shit. Our people died. Too bad. You know what I need to do? I need to resemble here some more barracks. Because they're effective against the enemy's forces. Kill them. Do not let anyone die. Keep killing them. Have no mercy. Wonderful. More of the enemy's armies are destroyed. Let's go this way now. Because they need reinforcements. Soon we'll advance to the next age and be able to produce more warrior monks. Nice. I need to upgrade this too quick. Uh, yeah, archery, good. Here they come again. Charge, 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 charge. Go, 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 go. Alright, go get a food. Okay, they're attacking from the other side. Quickly, give them a bit of cover. I need to upgrade also the... Where is my blacksmith? We had one somewhere. 
could also give the Kremlin some defenses, but I think this one should be fine, I guess. Yeah, no, let's just give the Kremlin a defense here. Ah, there we go. The Smith. Charge! Oh shit! They destroyed my entire army! Whew! That's not good. Perfect. Onwards. We need to send reinforcements immediately. Send reinforcements this way too. Quick. Forward, boys. Nice, we have held against them. Kill the archers of the enemy. Very good. Okay, I need to increase these productions as well, quick. Let's just get a stone. To upgrade our buildings here. Charge! Oh no! People, kill them! <laughs> Villager fight! Kill them! Hold on, I need to send some more. A new threat arrived at Moscow's gates. The Mongols rolled in their mightiest siege engines. Oh fuck. That's not... I'm lacking troops at the moment. We've already spent a lot of resources. And sold a lot too. Here, man, come on. We can do this. of Mongol war drums closing in. The Rus knew the horde would not relent. Yeah, they're coming. Charge. torches made short work of Moscow's wooden palisades, and now the old stone walls were all that stood between Dmitri and defeat. Fall back. Actually, yeah, no, we need to go this way. Oh, fuck. The minus food thing is here. Quick. I have no doubt that the enemy is now going to attack us from this side, too. Let's quickly send some reinforcements this way. Oh, fuck. Fall back. Shit. 
kill them all. You are men. Very good. Okay, fall back. Nice, we've held this position. Send some more spearmen. Die bastards. Very good. If I can kill that demon mangonels, I'll be fine because they're annoying as hell. Charge! Continue. Quick. I need some more warrior monks, please. Forward! Out of this land, you bastard. Wonderful. Oh shit, fall back. There's no use. Oh no. Beat their siege engines quick. Any more reinforcements quick? Kill them all. Charge them. Villages here. I mean, villages? What the hell? Spearmen. Kill them all! Nice, the siege engine is down again. Wonderful. Good attack. Wait, no, this way. Mm, get it, wood, please. Actually, no, let's just get food. Go hunt. Actually, no, we have no chance if we do this. Let's make farms. One, two, three, four. <laughs> Seven, let's go. Build farms and get a food, please. Crush this little thing here. Wonderful. Attack the enemy here and we're done. Partly. We have a lot of gold, dude. Oh shit. So full. No! Wait, let's sell stone then. There we go. Any more cavalry? Okay, we're nearly done. We have victory. This was quite challenging, however, being attacked from every side constantly. Die! Whew! Muscovites bravely held their capital in the face of an overwhelming Mongol onslaught. Exactly.
Wait, what? Now an even oh, larger fuck. army had arrived on Moscow's doorstep. Running out of time, Dmitri ordered his army to hold back the Mongols long enough for Moscow's citizens to escape. Come on. Nice, we have won. No one was getting in. Pew! Dmitri and his men held the city, giving some of Moscow's citizens time to flee. But despite their steadfast defense, the Rus could hold out no longer, and the capital succumbed to the vast numbers of the horde. Toktamish Khan sapped the city plundering its riches and slaughtering any Muscovites that remained. Prince Dmitri had no choice but to take flight, abandoning his home. Rus' independence would have to wait. Exactly. Now, uh, after the devastating sack of Moscow, Prince Dmitry was once again forced to submit to the Khan. The struggle for independence would pass the future princes. The empire falters. The vast power of Mongol Empire had held Moscow in its grip for almost two centuries. But despite its might, the empire was not immune to civil war.
Genghis Khan's grandsons in the East had fought bitterly to the title of Great Khan, and later in the West, competing branches of the family squabbled for supremacy over Russia, Persia, and the Crimea. Khan Toktamish of the Golden Horde became embroiled in a long series of violent conflicts with his former supporter Timur. The dominant Khan in the Middle East, Timur was a strong and the war was devastating in Toktamish. He lost his army in his capital and eventually forced to flee. As the remnants of the Golden Horde fought with neighbor Khanates, the time had come for Muscovy to seize upon the weakness of its long-standing overlords. Now, the face of battle. Among both the armies of Moscow and the Golden Horde were strange looking creatures. Grotesque, sinister faces that struck terror into a foe. There's a very long history of making helmets with mask visors with human features in the ancient Near East. Moscow was heavily influenced by this metalworking tradition, using the art of embossing to hammer these extraordinary sculptural forms into the steel. To make these masks required highly skilled artisans. In present-day Poland, Adam Mazia is a master of the craft. The process begins with a thick, flat sheet of wrought iron. The hammer stretches and domes the plate. The beginnings of a face. As the metal is pushed out, it becomes thinner and so easier to work. Adam marks a center point and an outline of the nose. This is the only guide he uses all else is done by eye alone. In Western Europe during the late Middle Ages, helmet design was all about function. What shapes are going to form glancing surfaces that make weapons skate and bounce away from the face? In Moscow, however, the approach was rather different. They sacrificed quite a lot of protection for the sake of extraordinary visual impact. There is a limit to which the metal can be stretched, and so a slot is cut to allow the nose to be shaped. Released from the bonds of the rigid plate, the nose takes on its distinctive form. In a way, armor is always a mask. It forces the world to see us as we want to be seen. Strong, powerful, indomitable. These Muscovite mask visors are an extraordinary example of that projection of identity. In some cases, they were actually made as portraits in the image of the wearer. With every strike, the features become more and more recognizably human. The furnace imbues the mask with a warrior's fury. When finished, the visor is given a high polish and attached to its helmet with this rotating hinge that allows the visor to be raised and stowed when not in use. But it can always be quickly lowered as soon as danger threatens. A man could project his power with such a mask. A man could hide his fear with such a mask. And by doing so, he could be brave. Exactly. Just as we spoke about this helmet, it is heavily influenced into the Muscovy uh, thing, uh, <laughs> culture. But it's amazing to see how the smith even created this mask as well. And, you know, it can certainly give someone a creep. Like, look at that face. Just <laughs> scary. But at the same time, amazing to see, in my opinion, then. So, um, yeah, it's... Obviously, a Crimean or what was it, Kipchak um, influence over the Rus. In the end, the Rus uh, do have a hold of quite a lot of Tatars and, you know, still alive right now. And Crimean people under their lands. And uh, you can see, as they have mentioned, that they have a lot of Eastern and Western thingy 
uh, alive within their presence and it's still amazing to see that they use it and even adapt and make it even more better or you know in their own way i guess but whatever um this is it so i hope you guys enjoyed it if you did give it a like button and subscribe to my channel if you new and wish to support it do you want to recommend something and get them together as possible as well just write down comments box below or join my discord server so we can have a chit chat about it till then i shall see you guys laters